Again, I started people's origin stories, but Mark, tell me about yourself. Where were you born and raised? Born and raised here in Seattle. I uh, was adopted at um, a very young age, um, being uh, what I was at that time, which was, you know, cute, white, and available. But the orphan, I didn't stay at the orphanage more than six weeks or two months. And I was put under the tree for my parents. And it was like one of those photo opportunities that people don't ever really realize that that was their gift, you know, to them that uh, they adopted, you know. But my name didn't change until the following September. 10 months later, or, yeah, to, from baby John Doe to Mark, so. Well, tell me about growing up, your home life. What was that like for you? Idyllic. Uh, I mean, my parents, my, my mom was blind, but my dad made enough to, you know, never, there was never want, but there wasn't excess, you know. They're, they're frugal people, and uh, such as their generation was. Right, right. But uh, we, the family secrets were like, they didn't care for their family that much, so we took a lot of travel time during vacation. Um, and it was just the four or eight of us with cousins and uncle and aunt. And a lot of times in Hawaii, I were Maui or Hornby Island a lot of little islands in my life you know uh, was it just you or were there other siblings? I have a sister that's two years younger okay. but also adopted uh, because of medical conditions of mom it would have been lethal she tried to give another kid she had one before I mean the weird thing was, is I used to cut across the cemetery just to go to Northgate and found, stumbled up on a tombstone and uh, asked about it and that was your sister. Oh, I didn't know. Oh. You know. And I do recall there were some pictures of mom, you know, full pregnancy, but it since there was nothing of it, what do you say? Right. You know, how do you ask as a kid? Yeah. What's that? You know. But. You know. So you went, you were born and raised in Seattle. Yeah. Born High raised, school. Educated the whole bit. Went through all that. Would have been busing, but they didn't agree to it. So private schools. Uh, got into what because I could take exams and tests. Didn't really even have to show up for school. Uh, most of it was self-explanatory, you know. You kind of get figure out that this is the class I'm in, so therefore this is the parameter of the questions are going to be within that. Um, that that hard to figure out. But uh, yeah, the the hardest things for me to learn were things that were very very specific, you know. There was no leeway to the answer. No room for error. No, and uh, translations, things like that. There was a room for error. I was okay with it. Took Latin, tried Greek, didn't work for me. Squiggles and things. Yeah. And those things were taught in private school, like you said. And was it like a religious private school? Mm -hmm. no, just... no, it was against that part of it. It was. It was it was called the Overlake School. It still is, probably. But they've changed a lot from being a deadhead hippie school to wanting to be more or less a um, college preparatory. Even though it pretty much was at that time even college prep because most of the things that we were being taught were first and second year college yeah. courses. In high school, right? Yeah. Well then, so you graduated from graduated. that? Graduated. And then what, after high school, where, where does life take you? Um, 
I was working at in a bistro um, and continued that thinking that that was something I wanted eventually and I did I worked myself up to a point from I kind of did the whole European thing Italian German Austrian Nordic never did Spain but did some tapas so yeah a little bit um, but uh, stayed mainly in Central Europe therefore being French Nordic I stayed within those if familiar and you traveled traveled by yourself or did you oh I did that but I knew people there gotcha, gotcha. that had traveled here all oh, right and just reconnected with them lost loves things like that and what what years are we talking about here oh uh, well my retirement stuff uh, just starting to get past it from when I was working at the Rainier Club as a dinner chef in 96 96 but and I made the big choice which was either work for Mr. Fisher in privately in his home as his home chef or open up my own shop and I opened up my own shop and that lasted five years so when you say shop you mean restaurant yeah here in Ballard. Oh, nice. What was it, I was what was it called? The Chamber of Commerce and yeah. the Merchants Association. Yeah. And I mean, there's still, my name is still on a few things. Yeah. And uh, I don't gloat over that, but uh, it's kind of different being homeless out here now. But then I really didn't have a home then either. I mean, the restaurant, the back of the restaurant, I made a my home oh really well let's and talk before ab- that I was living on the boat yeah let's talk about that kind of the first uh, time you found yourself without a I mean home is what you make of it true I mean I'm more home here now on any street any you know within a parameter of probably 20 blocks in both directions that no there's no encampment I couldn't go to yeah. Or I have to avoid. Yeah. Well, how long has that been? How long have you been out here? Off and on since 84. Yeah. 84? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like... I mean, I, it came down to it. I'd rather pay... I just really didn't like paying my landlord for something I still had to go outside to be. I mean, yeah. non-smoking was non-smoking, so you had to go out if you had wanted a cigarette. And it was that kind of a thing. I just really got tired of paying just to have some stuff. Yeah. And I didn't really need a lot. I still don't. Um, Basically, the people I know are what I have. My word and that. And I've tried to keep that. It's one of the only things I've tried to keep and uh, have to my the best of my knowledge not screw too many people over and uh, the ones that have felt that way there was always a reason for it from them even yeah 40 40 years is a long time yeah i mean i've been doing dope for 45 so yeah how did th- now that start so 45 years ago is like 1980 around yeah, there 79 79 so uh, what did that look like it was concerts and <laughs> just getting to you know group of people who, and who, what kind of music are you going to see great seven, dead. Seven, oh gotcha yeah I followed them for a while gotcha and which gives you an opportunity i mean it, it's not something you can just do you have to put yourself in a yeah. position of being able to do it yeah and the people i associated with were free and easy to do it yeah. and you know I still live that way yeah you, you still kind of ad- adopted that lifestyle yeah travel I guess what's a nomadic vagabond kind of just it was and the dead you know when you follow the dead you follow the family yeah, you're fo- yeah. 
t you know more about it than I do. I had a cousin that was a deadhead. I was just talking to my friend about this, and he'd follow the dead, and then all of a sudden pop up at our house, and all these characters would fall out of the car, and he'd come in, and then right. off they go. Yeah, and it was a lot of that, you know, skinny dipping to first kisses and and you know end of time because the next city is one you don't want to go to <laughs> and or one too far because you have got to get back to kind of home base where your hustle is right because you got to earn some money i guess and oh yeah and i've always been good at that yeah. i mean at least on the short term right short term small amounts well, I mean, but then I've always been a good chef, good yeah. cook. Uh, I, I present a great table. Well, when you're following the dead, I'm assuming like psychedelics is a big part of that. Some of it, yeah. Some of it. I mean, I wasn't as much into that as I was more into party drugs like coke and things that got me going. But then it's kind of reversed for me. Um, most amphetamines calm me down, whereas other uh, things that are aimed to calm you down speed me up, and uh, which I tend not to like. It's kind of strange, but uh, I'd no, rather be calm. No, I mean, we all have our uh, things we go to yeah. that make us feel better. Oh, yeah. And there's I a mean, gazillion, millions of those things. You know, and sometimes are, when people yeah. talk about doing drink, you know, they're just hitting, That's hitting right. brown water. Totally. You know? I like my Calvados. So I like, you know, my, you know, apple brandy. Yeah. You know, certain things just were nice. They're nice ways to just enjoy the same buzz. But, you know, I like the taste. Sure, sure, sure. Um, sure. And, you know, who am I kidding? You know, I always felt that I was one up on some of it. Mm. You know, more studied about it to go with what I was eating or whatever. Because of the food service part yeah, or the chef definitely. part? The food? Because it had to be, it was linked. Right. You know, we, we learned how to sell wine and sell booze to go with the meal. Right. You didn't want to go against it. Right, right, right. But, uh, you know, it was, abusing it was never the issue. I never really was an abuser. I was always moderate on all, you know, even while I was working. Still, that didn't change anything. Rules did. Yeah. Just like they changed rules now. I mean, a year ago, it was different out here. Now we've been notified that there's no notice to be given. You have 30 minutes to pack up or, or just get thrown away. And the irony is, is that could have been two hours prior, there was a group from the same city, same organization giving it to you. Right. And then they're just dumpstering it. It's like the most blatant waste of resources, funds, that you just, it's insane. Yeah. That, it's most, I, it just seems incredibly bipolar. That well, I, that's the, what's in charge. Yeah, there, that lodge, or I don't even know what you call it, that just passed, yeah. where you don't have to give a notice I anymore. I mean, there was no rhyme or reason for it just showing up like that. Because before it was like now, a three day, the no. police are under the parks department? Are you kidding? Who comes up with that thought? Because the police knew what they were doing was wrong and would didn't want to have any part to do with it. Because they didn't they knew everywhere else in the their time they have to get a warrant to do to justify what their actions are. That's right. So they knew they were being backed up. Without that they're rogue and what happens to rogue things that are just without without a warrant without any basis what people in houses would call home invasion that's how we feel that our encampments are being invaded 
and you know there are those of us that understand some rules of law not all of them but uh, we'll respect them enough to obey them but there are the bigger ones that we do and you know just coming in and you know clipping somebody on the back of the head with a riot gun without reason just because of location it just doesn't seem or feel fair or right you know and if they expect that there's no response that's what's really insane they know there's going to be a response and that's why they work with the parks department you know going to do anything to a ranger no but Pretty soon, the sanitation department will be running. Well, because it's all they all have their own there's garbage a, truck. There's a hierarchy, right? It's like these orders are they're following they're all orders. They're coming down from the mayor. Who That's right. Can't run again. So, I mean, he's termless. He's term defied. You know, defied. No. He's not going to make That's up it. and say I'll run again and change my name. Yeah. What? Uh, how many times have, have have you experienced a sweep? In these 11? 40 years, I guess. 11. 11. 11 real ones. Yeah. You know, supposedly after three, mm. you're supposed to get immune to it and get housed. Oh, gotcha. And, you know, to me, being housed or getting a tiny home was never a goal, ever. Um, it's just, to me, it's uh, being committed to where you couldn't have guests, you can't have people over, you're, you're basically isolated. Yeah, some, a lot of rules around that, yeah. tiny homes. And uh, to me, that's what kills. Mm. You know, I'm social. I, you know, just mentioning that to people this morning. Had people showing up where I was sleeping all last night, and that would never happen in a tiny house. Right. You know? The people I know that are in tiny houses are coming, still coming out here and being social. Right. Yeah, I've talked to, I talked to uh, several people who have a tiny home and they also have a tent. Oh, yeah. Which I think is pretty interesting. Well, you kind of have to. Well, and it shows the power of community. We're all longing for community in that. Well, most of us, I, I should say. And the thing is, there are so many people that you can trust and there are so many you've learned to distrust. For their own reasons you know but when you shake it all down we all there's some people that we've just known for the whole time yeah. and we've grown together and know each other's strengths weaknesses sure. and whatnot yeah just like any friend long-term friend exactly you know good or bad it's just the way it is right and um, you can forgive a lot but you don't forget it yeah yeah you know? I don't know. It's like it's it's just a bigger neighborhood than you than your immediate neighbors in a hope in a, an apartment or yeah. There's something to that. Block. I mean, even the street you know I, I live on. I know some of my neighbors, mm -hmm. but not. Ne my guess is it's a lot more intimate yeah. when you're trying to survive on the street. Oh yeah. And you're going through stuff together, and you get to know people really well. I mean. I, yeah, you take people in. It's different. Always, you know. There's, there's never a, a no. I don't, or no. You can't be here. Mm. You know, they even ones that have made it blatantly clear that you wouldn't want them there. You still don't turn them away because they're going to have somebody they know that you're you like still, and there's going to be just that. Yeah. That's weird angle of going. Well, no, I mean, those two still get on. So, I mean, I'm not going to deny it. his friend, you know, something to eat or something to drink. Right. And there's a lot of that, you know. And we all know what, you know, we tried to keep certain people in our close to us. But uh, we all feel, or a lot of us feel that way. Yeah. 
that there's really nothing you can do personally to get yourself, you know, excommunicated or told you're not welcome here anymore. Mm. I really don't know of anyone that's really done that much to himself. Yeah. I mean, after 40 years, yeah. you, you've probably seen and experienced a lot. Well, a lot of people that have been, that were just short time, just users, or big time in some other aspect of it. But pretty much all of us have stayed within that same realm. Mm. Some of us have changed our dope, but well, the, the, most of us haven't. The drugs have diff are the constantly drugs changing. Are different. Yes, oh, well, of course. But the people that use them aren't. <laughs> That's right, we're still humans, right? Well, yeah, but I mean, the people that are doing opiates are the same people doing opiates. I mean, you don't switch off, mm. you know? You get some people that do both speed and opiate, but it's rare, mm. you know? Speed balls are not for everybody, or goofballs, but, um, yeah. But, you know, I used to think it was mainly about the drugs out here. And it's not, it's about a freedom. I don't like being confined. Never have, you know. And I'm the guy you bribe, not the one you threaten. Threatening me just makes me dig in deeper. Yeah. And I'm stupid that way. That's the biggest part of it that I've, I know all along. If you want me to get to just keep doing the same thing over and over again, it's just keep telling me not to do it. <laughs> well, being threatened never feels good. It's no, it doesn't. It never works to anyone. But I usually try to prove it that, no, see, it works for me. Now I can't do that. It's the things have changed so much. The drugs have changed so much that I can't even do that. Nothing, not, none of it works. And I have to relinquishly admit to myself that a person that we both know has been right for seven years telling me this. And regretfully, I screwed the relationship up that could have been phenomenal or was great into just being a miss. And I really hate that part. Because that was my fault. And no matter what I say about it, even when it's to her, Without actions, it doesn't mean anything. Because I keep thinking, well, if it did work at one point, it's going to do it again. It hasn't. Something was reminding me the last, when we talked, you were talking about, you said something like, admittedly, this, my first love is. It's not now is uh used to be sounds like using using oh yeah it was and you were i put a ring on it i'm not divorced but uh it's not the same yeah there's still a relationship there but it's not the same not at all i don't have a loyalty to it like i used to mm. i mean i protected that that part of my life right now it's assumed that's a first. After 40 years, it's now assumed this is my life. And maybe that's what you get when you spend, you know, 40 out of 58 years doing the same thing. Mm. Or 45 out of 58. Well, yeah. what, what, is it, what is it that you would want? Not a do-over, I've spent way too much time figuring it out, but uh, I guess just less of prejudgment, you yeah. uh, know? Same as I give to anybody else, yeah. you know? 
acceptance of who they are. I'm supposed to accept all this other shit about people. It's weird as hell. I don't get it anymore. What? What do you mean you feel like, or this is something you feel like today? What's that mean? There's a term called radical acceptance. Yeah. It doesn't <laughs> sound right. I don't know. Yeah. But I don't get where guys are not guys and girls are, have more balls than most of the guys around here. And maybe that's what you get when moms raise families. Yeah. Because dads are not there. Because that seems to be the only common denominator. Missing parents. Well, this is kind of leading me to my last question that I like to ask Mark. Is there anything that you would want the people of Seattle to know? You had a big chance. And I know we on our, our side fucked it up with COVID and all that shit and took and we were completely irresponsible. But it doesn't have to be to the point of excess to where people are getting killed over housing. Uh, it seems just a little extreme because they don't want the pendulum to swing the other way. But people like me we're not being listened to like we used to be. Because we don't see the pain when someone gets shot. For color, for other things. And when it's forgiven by so many, it's not forgotten by so many of us. And it never was asked to be forgiven. Lost a lot of people in the last two years. I never had this many people of my friendships and people under me die by their own hand or by someone else's. Especially law enforcement. It just never seemed plausible. It always seemed something from back east, not out here. You're hinting or saying that law enforcement has ended some of the homeless people's lives? Yeah. That you've seen? Yeah. Yeah. And that is under and that's the... that's one of the reasons why we're still out here. And I don't mean it conspiratorial. I mean that that's where they have a reason to keep they have a, a boot on our back about it, what we know, or we're a witness to. It's one of the weirdest things to be charged with being a witness. If it doesn't come to trial, you're still that witness and you're still in jail. To say that you were there but not a witness, and for them to believe that? That's why they keep close tabs on some of us. Because we were there. Yeah, you guys know something that's pretty powerful. Yeah, because it could put them away. Because it was an unlawful killing. Just like most of them are. It's just very few come to trial. They all seem to make a deal. Yet anybody else around it, they're affected. Mm, all right. Yeah. And don't try to leave. That's what you're told. Don't try to leave. Mark, <laughs> uh, thanks for sharing. Yeah. It's good to hear your voice. Good to see you again. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All right. I'm gonna grab that little mic and take yeah. a couple photos and pay some money. 
Ooh, thank you.